It's 1961 and Rebecca has decided to leave her home in East Berlin and move to the West. She decided she would leave early on Sunday morning. Everyone got up to see her off. She could not eat any breakfast. She was too upset. I'll probably go to Hamburg, she said, faking good spirits. Anselm Weber is head of a school there now, and I'm sure he'll hire me. Her grandmother, Maud, in a purple silk robe, said, you could get a job anywhere in West Germany. But it will be nice to know at least one person in the city, Rebecca said forlornly. Wally chipped in. There's supposed to be a great music scene in Hamburg. I'm going to join you as soon as I can leave school. If you leave school, you'll have to work, their father said to Wally in a sarcastic tone. That'll be a new experience for you. No quarrelling this morning, said Rebecca. Father gave her an envelope of money. As soon as you're on the other side, get a taxi, he said. Go straight to Marienfelde. There was a refugee centre at Marienfelde in the south of the city near Tempelhof Airport. I'm sure you'll have to wait in line for hours, maybe days. Her mother was in tears. We will see you, she said. You can fly to West Berlin any time you want, and we can just walk across the border and meet you. We'll have picnics on the beach at the Wannsee. Rebecca was trying not to cry. She put the money in a small shoulder bag that was all she was taking. Anything more in the way of luggage might get her arrested by the Vopos at the border. She wanted to linger, but she was afraid she might lose her nerve altogether. She kissed and hugged each of them, Grandmother Maud, her adoptive father, Werner, her adoptive brother and sister, Lily and Wally, and last of all, Carla, the woman who had saved her life, the mother who was not her mother, and was, for that reason, even more precious. Then, her eyes full of tears, she left the house. <laughs>